Hello everyone, I just received my new and second ZRDR DIY CO2 generator. I got one three months ago and so far I'm very pleased, so I decided to get another one and here it is. In this video I will do a quick unpacking of the generator and go over the setup process and CO2 generation process too. The package comes with a little book, uh, instruction booklet. Uh, it also comes with the stand for the bottle, that's pretty cool, so the bottle doesn't fall over, plus in the beginning it kind of sweats when it generates the CO2 so the floor or, or the table that you put it on doesn't get wet. In here we see uh, uh, the power supply for the solenoid valve. It also comes with a mini funnel if you don't have one. Um, but I got uh, one of my own, so I'll be using that one. It's a little bigger. It's got a nice long CO2 tube. Pretty rigid stuff. Very nice. Here is the pressure reducing valve with the pressure gauges. One gauge shows the internal pressure of the bottle and the other one shows the pressure in a tube. That's the filter. Comes with extra o-rings. That's pretty nice. It has one-way uh, valve that stops the aquarium water from going back when the pressure in the tube is low. You have to blow through it to pop it. It comes, uh, the, uh, it, it's kind of stuck so you have to blow through it so it opens up. Next we have a, a stainless steel U-tube. This goes over the aquarium side panel over the top. We have a stainless uh, steel atomizer, that's pretty nice. Next we have the solenoid valve. I read some comments that this, this goes bad after a month, but so far uh, mine, my first one is working for past three months and I had no issues, so that's good. Hopefully this doesn't break anytime soon. We have an extra atomizer, that's also nice. If your original one goes bad or something, you could replace it. We got four suction cups in here. That's pretty nice, they're pretty powerful, I like those. And uh, at last, we have our actual bottle. Now, let's get this out. There we go. Now let's put this all together and start our CO2 generating process. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty easy, straightforward process. First, we connect the filter on the bottom of the uh, valve or the pressure valve. Pipe, whatever is on it. I will screw it in just just a little bit so it doesn't fall off. So I can continue with the solenoid valve. Pretty easy. Just put it on top and screw the bottom or turn the bottom. There you go. Tighten it up. And then um, I think I'm missing something. Yes, I am. I'm definitely missing something. Yep. I'm missing the syringe. That's going to be used to put the water in the bubble counter. And I was missing the bubble counter. Here we go. 
we will add this at the end and we will add the water in it so let's do let's quickly add the ingredients I'm going to unscrew the pressure valve double check all the measurements in the book and here we go I got a gallon of citric acid and soda I've been using this for a while now and there's still a lot left which is pretty good we use 600 grams of soda and 600 grams of citric acid and a 900 milliliters of water mixture acid that's it easy peasy lemon squeezy now while we're at this let's refill my oldest and cheapest co2 generator the I don't know CLCA G200 aquarium build yourself co2 generation kit this was like twenty dollars, and I've had this. I've had this for a year now, so pretty good. It has a few issues here and there, but uh, you know, for the price of it, for twenty dollars, you cannot go wrong. This one takes one hundred eighty grams of um, citric acid and two hundred grams of soda, and five hundred milliliters of water. got the starter in this one since the ingredients are separate you have to have uh, extra citric acid in this little container that eventually I will drop into the soda bottle to start the whole reaction Where I'm, before I add the water, I'm going to put some Teflon tape on uh, on the top of the, my bottles. This is one of the issues that I'm having with this. That uh, last time when I um, refilled these bottles, there was some CO2 escaping from underneath the cup uh, caps. Um, no matter how tight I tighten it, some CO2 was escaping. But I found that Teflon tape actually helps. water in both of the bottles mix up the citric acid to make sure it's all done we're going to add the the metal ball that thing is like a plastic with the metal inside and that's going that's going to be the section edge end of the co2 is the co2 is going to go through there into the soda bottle now we are adding the co2 uh, citric acid starter into the soda bottle i'm going to mix it up to start our process
This thing comes with the magnet. It's like a fail safe. You want to adjust how deep that head, that metal butt, the metal uh, head is in the bottle. <laughs> Just in case, you know that that allow you you t you're adjusting how much of CO2 you want to allow to go into the soda bat bottle. And there we go. Once the gauge hits the green, this the system is ready to be used. Let's finish up our big bottle. Add 900 milliliters of water to this. Make sure we clean everything. The reaction has started. Quickly close the top. Double check, make sure no air is leaking. There we go. It shows the pressure is good, starting to build up. Going to add our uh, bubble counter. Let's put some water in there with the syringe. There we go. Adjust the valves. Turn on the solenoid. And now we see it allows the CO2 to go through. You guys can see the bubbles counting there. And there we go, this is ready. This will take up to 10 hours to reach its maximum pressure. It could be used now if we want it, but I'm going to let this one stay for next 10 hours to get its pressure. And you are, uh, see the end results. My old generator all hooked up. I have it set up up here in a corner so the water flow can move the CO2 bubbles around the aquarium before they reach the top. You can see the bubbles floating all inside the tank. floating all over the place. On this aquarium I'm going four bubbles per second. Very slow, not what anyone else recommends. You know, people say you gotta do one bubble a second, but I do four bubbles a second and this is more than enough. And that system will go on for next three months for me. And here's my second aquarium with the big bottle. I have also set this up in front of the water flow. So the actual water flow takes all the bubbles and uh, mixes it all over the aquarium. You can see tiny bubbles floating everywhere in the aquarium. This is my copy sanctuary. You can see bubbles everywhere, tiny bubbles, CO2 bubbles everywhere. Say hi to my shrimp. This is our big bottle standing here on the floor and this one I'm doing two bubbles per second for now and then eventually I might adjust and slow make it even slower <coughs> excuse me unfortunately you guys cannot see the PSI but we're at 600 PSI because uh, when I was doing my measurements I added a little bit more than I should have but that doesn't matter, looks like we're good at 600 PSI, I've done this before. 
And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. 